check to the screen so we can see what it looks like. So there's the check comment right there. And it is a different format. The question was asked whether um, on break what format it actually uses. And there is a cash management um, version of the payables check. So there are two separate formats if you wanted to modify this. OK. So now I close the window. I'm going to get my posting journals. Any questions on that? Okay. No, there's no batch anywhere in Big Crack. It's all post it and go. The only thing is like your deposits you can save one per checkbook and come back and, re and work on it some more. And your reconciliation you can save and come back and work on it some more. And that's where we are going next is our reconciled bank statement. <clears throat> so we pull up our checkbook that we're, we've got our statement for that we want to reconcile. And it's going to ask for the bank statement ending balance. So I'm just going to plug in a number here. It's not required because you may have some banks that are zero balances, like Sweet or something like that. Um, and, and until you go through the reconciliation process, all of these bankrupt transactions are in the open state. If you're familiar with Great Plains, you've got work open in history. So all of these are in open in cash management or bank rec. And once I reconcile, it will take those transactions and move them to history. So I'm just going to plug in a date here for my statement. <laughs> if I can type, I'm going to put in a date. <laughs> I could also use the calendar. Um, Oh wait, they're in 27. Goodness. Here, I'm using the calendar. Seven. There we go. Now the cutoff date here is optional. Um, I highly recommend that you make it the exact same as your bank statement ending date. Because this is going to control two things. It's going to control which transactions I'm going to see in my list to select to reconcile. And it's also going to affect my reconciliation report that I get afterwards. If I leave this cutoff date open, when I go to transactions, I'm going to see everything, even everything past April, the date that I'm reconciling. So when I print my, you know, I can reconcile to zero and everything, and I can only mark the items that cleared. But when I print my report, I'm going to have outstanding checks, an amount, and it's going to include outstanding checks, you know, clear into the future because I did not put a cutoff date. So it's not going to be my outstanding checks as of 4:30, or it's not going to be my deposits in transit as of 4:30. So I highly recommend you put a cutoff date so that your reconciliation report is accurate. Um, I have had auditors come through and look at that kind of thing, and they're like, "How come your outstanding checks, you know, may not match?" What's your outstanding check? You know, because you'll get everything. So you'll want to put in a date here, the cutoff date. <coughs> and I haven't uh, done anything. I can save it, and I can open it back up, and it's going to have my information there. Once I click transactions, uh, ignore this. You will not get this unless you have uh, eBankRec module loaded, <coughs> you'll get this window. 
And this is where you're going to go through and select your transactions. So this is everything coming in from cutting checks, the deposits that you used in the deposit window, um, any transactions that you vendor for increase adjustments, decrease adjustments, try you know transfers, wires, everything affecting this checkbook is in here. There we go. Some questions down here. I'll come to these questions in just a second. <coughs> okay. So this window, what, what are we going to display? Um, all what I've marked, what isn't marked yet. I can just I can sort it by type or date. I can select a range. So if I know, let me flip this a little bit. If I don't want to come and mark every single one of these little guys individually, whatever area I'm on, you can see I've got this big arrow here. It says what line I am, I'm on. I can say mark this as my beginning range, and I get a little arrow. And then if I click down, scroll down a ways, I can say mark my end range. And I get a visual cue here of the range that I've selected. And then I could say mark them. And my cues go away. So I can grab a big range, and I might just want to deselect a few you know, versus going through and marking all of them one at a time. So there is kind of a range option there. Um, if I did a range again, I could clear them. So I'm just going to select the beginning and an ending range. And this time, instead of mark, I'm going to do unmark and then unmark the range. So it's a little different than you know, just um, the range works a little different in this window than you see in others, but it, it's still kind of that that purpose there. There's that function there to mark a range. Um, one thing that I want to um, give you a tip on is if I'm displaying unmarked items and I click redisplay here, it's going to hide things that I've already marked. doesn't mean that they're not marked. They're still marked. But if I click on, let's say, this $100,000 deposit, it's now marked, right? If I click off of it, going to disappear, and it throws me into an area where I'm unfamiliar. <laughs> so it's like, what just happened? Did you see how it like took me to the top? It took me to like the next entry. So like, watch this. I'll click this guy, and I'll click off, and then it's like, where did I just go? So that's a little confusing to people, um, but it's because I'm saying display unmarked, and so it jumps me to the record that was above the one that I just marked. So that can be a little tricky for people. <coughs> Confusing, I guess. Um, but as I'm marking items, um, any payment types, this will start incrementing. Any deposit types will start incrementing. So this is kind of a running total. If you get a statement that are broken down into sections, you know, you could do a section, see if my type you know, if that total matches, do my next section, see if my running total matches, if you've got large statements to do, so you can kind of keep track of yourself as you're going, so you don't get done at the end and then like off a dollar, and now I've got hundreds of things to go through to find a dollar. That might be a, a tip for you. Um, as far as like checks that clear for different amounts, you can handle that. <coughs> Let's say that, uh, see this negative check? That's perfectly legit. All of those voiders or refunds. Um, let's say that this cleared for uh, 96 cents instead of 98. So I select my line that I'm working with, and I 
Click into the expansion window up at the top of that column. And now it's saying, okay, here's my check amount. Here's the amount that it cleared for. So I can just change that to a six. And I've got a two cent difference that I'm going to have to deal with. Now you may have company rules that say if it's under a certain amount of money, we just write it off. Um, if it's not, you know, we go after it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's up to you. I would think two cents you'd probably just write off. But it puts a visual indicator right there just saying, hey, you've, you've got to check clearing difference on this line item and you're going to have to deal with it. So this check cleared for less, so I need to put two cents back in. Right? Because right now it's thinking 98 cents, only 96 actually came out of the checkbook. <coughs> um, you've got your adjusted bank balance and your adjusted book balance and your difference. You cannot reconcile until this difference is zero. So even if I click the reconcile button, it will not let me because I'm not in balance. If I click on the expansion, the difference, it will... Um, it will give me basically what's going to print out on my reconciliation cover sheet or my reconciliation report so you can see how many outstanding checks you think that there is, outstanding deposits, any adjustments that may have been made to come to our balance to get those two in sync right there. <coughs> so this two cents I've got to deal with. Um, obviously, I would have to deal with a lot more, but in this case, the two cents, the adjustment, it's going to say, okay, here's the checkbook I'm reconciling, here's the cash account that is tied to it. I've got a clearing difference, two cents. So this will be a total. So if you've got multiple clearing differences, you're going to see a total of a clearing difference here, whichever direction it would go. So I, I need to do something with that two cents. I need to update my general ledger. And that's why I've got an account down here. What, where am I going to write that two cents off? And so here I've got transaction type. Um, depending on which direction I'm going, I could either do a miscellaneous income or I could do a miscellaneous expense for this two cents. I could also in here just put my interest income or any service charge that's on my statement. Um, and it will update the checkbook balance and my DL at the same time here. So we've got two cents here that we are going to just throw to like a... Miscellaneous income, sure. And if I went the right direction, it would it would bring me um, to zero, so it, I'd be just fine. So that's how you would deal with the write-off. Again, you could do the service charges. Just do another line of well. Do that. Just come down to my next line. Say I got a service charge. Where am I booking it to? You know, you may have bank charges. I don't know what the account number is, so I'm just throwing an account number in there. You know, I don't know, but you can book those things as you go along. <coughs> okay.